Hello, I'm Ian Scales and you're watching Telecom TV's Executive Insight. Today I'm talking with Evan Upton. Evan is the Executive Director of Raspberry Pi. So Evan, that's the summary. Tell us what is Raspberry Pi and why you embarked on this project. Raspberry Pi is a credit card sized Linux uh, computer. Uh, we created this here in Cambridge in the hope that we could encourage more children to learn to program. At the university we had a terrible recruitment, continue to have, I, I believe, a terrible recruitment cri uh, crisis that we, we struggle to find enough applicants to come and study computer science at Cambridge. We've gone from having 500 applicants a year in the mid-1990s down to more in the region of 250 for about 100 places. And that still sounds like a great oversubscription ratio, but it's certainly not what we've been used to in Cambridge. So really, Raspberry Pi started as an attempt to um, reboot some of that 1980s culture in which children would have in their bedrooms a machine that they could use to learn to program. I know you designed the Raspberry Pi for the education market in the UK. Have you been surprised at how it's taken off into other areas? We honestly did believe this was a 1,000 to 10,000 unit opportunity. Uh, I think what we didn't understand was that there would be an enormous interest in this from the hobbyist community, the adult technically literate adult hobbyist community. We didn't, also didn't understand that there would be enormous interest in it from the industrial market, that this makes a fantastic little industrial computer. And so those two things really drove a two, order, a two orders of magnitude demand surprise for us that we've really spent most of, the last, most of the last year dealing with. You have a $35 price point. Are you confident that you can maintain that or even improve it? Uh, there's one of the interesting things about this device is that there's, there's no, there is nobody making a loss in the, in, in, in the supply chain. I think when we first came out with that price point, there was an assumption that this was in some way a limited time offer, that somebody in that supply chain would sooner or later get sick of losing money and that we'd have to jack the price up. Very confident we can keep the $35 price point for this. We've already, back in November, doubled the RAM. We started off shipping with a quarter of a gigabyte. We now ship with half a gigabyte. We're able to double the RAM in the same price point. So we're very, we're very confident about that. We're also very confident uh, that we're going to be able to deliver the $25 machine that we originally promised. That's the same machine, but without the network interface. The thing we're interested in, of course, is M2M. And it strikes me, as it's probably struck a lot of people here in Cambridge, that this device is ideal for more complex M2M applications. Um, is this a market that you're going to actively chase? Uh, we've seen a lot of interest in the M2M space and the industrial control space. There are a lot of, um, historically, I think the market structure has been, there have been a lot of little industrial verticals for, for, for different M2M, for different control and M2M type. Um, applications. One of the nice things about the Pi is that it can address almost all of those verticals, so it aggregates all of those together into one big market and then addresses it at a very, very, um, a, a very good price point. Another big area for Raspberry Pi, of course, might be the developing world. How important is that going to be to the success of Raspberry Pi? I think that's another market that we didn't really anticipate because we, we had this kind of laser focus on the UK educational market. It's something we hadn't anticipated. I think it's something that's being kind of slow to develop. It's very early days for us yet. Right now we're shipping about a third of our units. We're shipping between one and 200,000 units a month and about a third of those are going to the UK, a third into North America and a third into the rest of the world. The rest of world primarily means uh, Europe, South Africa, um, uh, Australia and New Zealand. So there are enormous swathes of the world where we, where we haven't had the level of impact that, that we might now like to have. And I think the next year is going to be about trying to address that for us. Now, can anybody put a Raspberry Pi together? Uh, to, to actually build the device, you need a relatively sophisticated, um, I would say probably a second tier of sophistication. It's not the level of sophistication you require to build a, uh, a modern, very small, very high level of integration cell phone. But it's neither is it yeah, that any old PCB manufacturing, in particular we use a process which we call POP to assemble the, um, uh, the ASIC that we use to assemble the memory onto that. So you have a BGA onto the board and another BGA onto the BGA. That process is somewhat sophisticated and has, you know, restricts our choice of contract manufacturer a little. We, you know, we see it as a building block. We see ourselves, uh, outside our traditional educational market, we see ourselves really as a component supplier. We're providing a pre-integrated, a certain level of integration and then um, other people are free to learn, build on top of that. We've been talking all the time about hardware, Evan, but a really important part of Raspberry Pi, of course, is the software. Tell me a little bit about how you're tackling that. So one thing we've done with this device, which I think differentiates us from some other small board computers, is we have worked very hard on the out-of-the-box experience. We've worked very hard on providing a standard, rather than just providing a board and leaving it to third parties to provide operating system in, um, distributions, we produce a standard distribution for it, which is the recommended first thing that people use. One thing we did at the end of last year was to integrate into that an app store platform 
Uh, so it is now possible to go and uh, have a, have a very uh, it would be a very familiar experience for anyone who has used one of one of the other one of these other software shop um, platforms. Um, and it's a way for people to get both free uh, content and also paid for content, and importantly, a way for kids to share what they've done with other people. How do you expect to develop the, the product in the future, and what sort of figures do you expect for next year? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, it's an interesting question. The, um, in terms of future developments, uh, I think the, certainly this year we're very focused on getting more value out of this platform. So we're very focused on software work that gets more value out of the existing hardware. We've sold a million units. Uh, we could go chasing off after some new, faster, higher performance processor. What we do is would be, A, we might well have to abandon that price point, and B, we would orphan all of the people who'd already bought devices. There is an enormous amount of low-hanging fruit on the software side, and we're spending time trying to, uh, uh, try, trying to address that. Obviously, manufacturing is a very important part of this effort. What's your partnering strategy going forward? Um, our business model is kind of unusual. You know, we, we, uh, we started off intending to be a regular electronic, uh, a regular, if not-for-profit, um, electronic um, device manufacturer. So we would commit, we'd buy inventory and uh, commission manufacturing. Now, it became very apparent to us early on, because we're a not-for-profit, we can't really raise risk capital easily. And it became uh, apparent to us that that wasn't going to scale to the sort of level of interest that people were seeing. So what we do now, we license our designs to um, uh, RS Components and Element 14 Premier Farnell, both of which are billion pound UK PLCs. Uh, and they then get, get, they, they're the people who've given us the scale. That's how an organisation with uh, you know, a, a very small number of people involved has been able to ship a million units in a year. Um, that model, I think, is working very well for us. I think we'd be kind of reluctant to step away from that. And certainly it does give us almost limitless scale. I see no reason why we wouldn't be able to scale that to 2 million, 5 million, 10 million units a year. Evan, that's great. Thank you very much. Don't miss our interview with William Webb on the M2M channel. <laughs>